Did you guys know that there's actually a Daedric quest in Skyrim that you can fail? And by fail, I mean that if you make the wrong decision, the game will actually punish you. Now, a lot of players believe that this is actually a bug, but I think it's actually been designed this way to punish the player for making what many would believe is just a morally horrendous decision. And some of you may be wondering, well, how exactly does Skyrim punish the player? Well, firstly, the reward you get for doing this and making the wrong decision is pretty crap. Secondly, it actually stops you if you make the wrong decision from completing one of the achievements in the game or one of the trophies if you're on PS4. So in this video, I want to talk about this whole quest and how interesting I think it is because I think it's just so clever how the game actually punishes you like this. So we're all on the same page, let's quickly go through this quest because you can actually get the best follower in the game by doing it as well. You can start it by heading to the west gate of Falkreath. Once you're here, turn around and head west into the forest, down the road leading away from the city. You'll need to be level 10 to start the quest, but you will come across a dog named Barbus. You are exactly what I was looking for! Did you just talk? <laughs> yeah, Skyrim is now host to giant flying lizards and two-legged cat men. And you're surprised by me? <laughs> yeah, I just talked. And I'm continuing to do so. You see, my name is Bobbis. And I have a problem I think you can help sort out. To be fair though, the Khajiits have existed for tens of thousands of years and dragons have existed previously and have now come back to Skyrim and it makes sense why. So yes, I'm surprised by a talking dog. So, what do you need my help with, Barbus? My master and I had a bit of a falling out. We got into an argument and it got rather heated. He's kicking me out until I find someone who can settle our disagreement. That's where you come in. So you're just a lost little puppy. You're very funny. <laughs> My master's Clavicus Vile, Daedric Prince of Wishes. As you can imagine, he's quite the important person. Sounds easy enough. Let's go find him. Thank you. Now, since he banished me, Vile's been rather weak. He can't manifest very far from one of his shrines. I know there's a cult that worships him at Hamar's Shane. We should be able to talk to him there. If this works out, I'll make sure you're rewarded. Hey, just don't trust any offer he makes you, okay? He will give us the quest, a Daedra's best friend. Now notice that Barbus already informs us we should not trust any offer Clavicus Vile makes us. And this is going to be a running trend through this whole quest. You're repeatedly told not to trust him. But anyhow, we're supposed to follow Barbus all the way across the map until he leads us to his master's shrine. Now the place Barbus is actually taking us is all the way from Falkreath to the east. Over here, this cave, Hamer's Shame. And we can actually fast travel there because it's much faster unless you want to follow Barbus across the whole of Skyrim, which trust me, you can if you like. So here we are with Barbus and we finally made it to the cave entrance, so let's head on inside. This cave, however, is full of vampires. We'll find out exactly why in a moment, but make sure you eliminate them all as you journey your way through there. Get wrecked. Get wrecked, son. That's how vampires sound when they die. Apparently. Well, hello there. What? Ex excuse me? Boom. Headshot. Double wrecked. Oh boy, Barbus, absolute savage confirmed. So here we are at the shrine of Clavicus Vile, and now we can finally talk to him about Barbus. Lord Vile, I have a request for you. By all means, let's hear it. It's the least I could do since you already helped me grant one final wish for my last worshippers. 
They were suffering so from vampirism and begged me for a cure. Then you came and ended their misery. I couldn't have planned it better myself. So, what's your heart's desire? What kind of deal can we strike? And once again, we get another example of how Clavicus literally interprets his followers' wishes. So we can ask him a few things. I'm just here to reunite you with Barbus. I want to end the civil war that plagues my land. The power to crush all before me. It doesn't really matter what you ask for, though. So let's go and ask him for the uh, end to the civil war. Oh, if I had my full power, granting that would be trivial. I'd simply snap my fingers and everyone in Skyrim would die. War resolved. As much as I hate to say it, you're almost as powerful as I am right now. But that's just because half of my power resides in that muck barbus. Hey, come to think of it, I know of a win-win situation for both of us. What's your offer? There's an axe. An incredibly powerful axe. An axe powerful enough for me to have quite a bit of fun indeed. If you bring it to me, I'll grant you my boon. No strings attached, no messy surprises. At least not for you. As I recall, it's resting in Rhyme Rock Burrow. Barbers can lead you right to it. Little Mutt might even earn his place back at my side. So our next part of this journey is to travel over to Rim Rock Barrow. Where we can get a little bit of a backstory on the Rueful Axe before we leave. So what's the story behind it, Barbus? One of Clavicus's little chests. A wizard named Sebastian Lord had a daughter who worshipped her scene. When the daughter became a werewolf, it drove Sebastian over the edge. He couldn't stand to see his little girl take on such a bestial form. The wizard wished for the ability to end his daughter's curse. <laughs> Clavicus gave him an axe. Alright, so the fastest way out of the dungeon is this way. And just to pull the lever, make sure you grab the chest on the way out. But as you heard just there, Clavicus gives people very literal solutions to their problems. And obviously not what you'd want necessarily. So the next place we need to go on the map is all the way in the north. West, just here, Rim Rock Burrow. Let's fast travel over. You cannot fast travel where. God damn it. Now, just a hint, guys, at this point in the quest, it's actually possible to steal Barbus as a follower. Barbus is actually one of the best followers in the game, and until the quest is completed, he will literally follow you around the whole game, acting as an invincible tank. He just can't be killed. It's impossible to kill him. He has unlimited health. And he constantly absorbs the enemy's attacks for you, running in there first and acting like a tank while you dish out the real damage at range with spells or a bow or even in melee. Also guys, you can have any follower like Lydia for example, in addition to Barbus as well, since he's actually a quest follower. Now Barbus doesn't do much damage himself, but he's just infinitely useful. But then, eventually, when his uh, constant barking starts to annoy you, you can just finish the quest and return Barbus to his master. As you can see, Rimrock Barrow is located on the edge of a cliff just here. It's a very small dungeon, and it's where we're going to find the father of this lady who was murdered. Now, of course, as Barbus told us, this man is a wizard, so he's going to have a few Atronachs ready to kill us as we enter. I suggest taking out the fire one first. wrecked as for the wizard he's going to be up here just chilling out he doesn't even care that his astronaut just got killed so give him a arrow to the back of the knee get wrecked son hell yeah so he is now dead sebastian lortz and you can find the rueful axe just here on this stone tablet we can see, though, from the werewolves embossed on the axe that the wizard Sebastian 
probably did kill his daughter since she is no longer in the cave with him and he instead seems to keep a female flame atronach for company. Now before we talk about this weapon, let's head deeper inside the cave because there is a boss chest here for you to grab as well very quickly. And now we need to travel all the way back to Clavicus Vile. My god, that's a long way. So here we are with Barbus and the axe back at Clavicus Vile's chamber. Let's see what Clavicus has to say to us. Ah, you've got the axe! And my dog! Splendid! We're back. Now fulfill your end of the bargain. Excellent work! A hero and his faithful companion retrieving the ancient <laughs> artifact for the prince. It's almost... storybook. Ah, oh, but it almost seems a shame to give a weapon like that away, doesn't it? I suppose I could be persuaded to let you keep it. But only if you use the axe to kill Barbus. Simple as that. So Clavis has given us the opportunity to keep the axe in exchange for killing Barbus the dog. This is the decision to be made. I'm going to say for now, let's have a chat to Barbus. But I sure would like to keep this axe. And I could absorb the spirit of poor dead Barbus. He'd still be reunited with me. And I'm sure Barbus doesn't want me to have that axe. He'd want it this way. The choice is yours, friend. We're all counting on you to make the right decision. Put him out of our misery. Oh, wait a second! There, there's another option here! I think I want to keep this axe, though. The axe isn't the only item dear old Clavicus has. Give him the rueful axe, and once we're reunited, the mask of Clavicus Vile will be yours. So the choice here is that we can kill Barbus to keep the axe, or we can give the axe back to Clavicus Vile and get the mask of Clavicus Vile. I'm going to show you both options. Firstly, let's kill Barbus. Ah! He's dead. Are we done here? Absolutely. Now I can reabsorb his body and return to full power, all without having to listen to his whining. Oh, sure, he'll be back in a century or two. But think of the fun I can have till then. Enjoy that axe, and don't worry about poor old Barbus. After all, he really should have picked a better friend. And we've completed a Daedra's best friend. But, unfortunately, let's take a look at the uh, the Rufal Axe here. Because it's really actually one of the worst unique weapons in the entire game. And there's a reason for that. Yes, it does do 22 damage, which is the same as a Glass Battle Axe. So that's pretty powerful. But it actually has the slowest attack speed in the entire game. So your damage per second is going to be pitiful. Not to mention the crappy enchantment that does 20 stamina damage and in most situations is just going to be completely useless to you anyway. Now, do note that it is possible to duplicate the Rufal Axe or you can just keep it until you want to finish the quest. Since the Axe is actually a very good weapon to have at level 1 until you get something better. Now, if you've made this decision, you'll realize that the Rufal Axe is actually just a hidden slap on the wrist from Bethesda for choosing to kill a dog. Especially when you realize that the Rufal Axe does not actually count towards the Oblivion Walker achievement. Skyrim basically has an achievement called Oblivion Walker, and to get it, you need to obtain 15 Daedric artifacts. Now, there are a total of 17 Daedric artifacts in the entire game but you can only obtain 15 unless you're cheating or exploiting a quest. Now, if you choose not to kill Barbus, you'll get Clavicus's Vile's Mask, and that counts as a Daedric Artifact, and it counts towards the Oblivion Walker achievement. 
but if you choose to kill Barbus, you'll obviously get the Rufal Axe. But the Rufal Axe does not count as a Daedric Artifact, so you're basically stopping yourself getting the achievement. Now for years, a lot of people thought that this was just a bug, that it didn't count as a Daedric Artifact. But to be honest, all the signs here point towards this being intentional by design. To actually punish the player for making such a selfish, horrendous moral decision. How could you kill a poor innocent dog? You literally just kill it in one hit as well. And the definition of the word rueful means to express sorrow or regret in a humorous way. That is why a Daedra's best friend is one of my favourite quests in Skyrim, because it's just so interesting how they design the game that way. But now what happens if we make the right decision to return the axe to Clavicus Vile in turn to spare Barbus's life? Oh, wait a second. There, there's another option here. I've been thinking it over. And? No deal. Take the axe back and Barbus. Huh. You're no fun at all. Guess I'll have to make my own fun elsewhere. And with the pup back, I'll be restored to my full power. There's a whole world just waiting for me! I knew I could trust you. Yeah, yeah, dog gets master, master gets cosmic axe. Everyone's happy, just get over here, mutt. Don't worry, I'll make sure he sees the light. I trusted you, now you trust me. Ah, oh, that feels so much better. You forget how nice supreme power feels until you've been stuck in a cave for a few years. Now, as for your wish, an end to the war, was it? I'll make sure this war ends all right. Just as soon as the dragons swarm across Skyrim and wipe out all of you puny... Oh, fine. Have my boon and be done with it. Got more interesting deals to make anyway. There we go, the Mask of Clavicus Vile. Let's take a look at this item, guys. Now, the mask makes prices 20% better, and it also fortifies our persuasion by 10 points as well, making it the best headwear for selling items in the game. It also regenerates Magicka 5% faster, which is nice, but it's nothing special. Ultimately, the most interesting thing about this questline is that the game does indeed reward the morally correct decision here, and it punishes the bad ones so hard. I hope you guys found this video interesting. It's one of those things that I think no one's really ever spoken about and I thought I just wanted to make a video on it to discuss it with you guys because it's one of those hidden details that is extremely clever from Bethesda there. If you guys did enjoy the video go ahead and subscribe and you can also check out the other playlist in the description of all the weapons in Skyrim and all of the lore behind them because we always delve deep into that kind of content. And if you want to press the bell icon YouTube will then notify you when I'm next streaming Oblivion because we're going through the Dark Brotherhood DLC at the moment. You can check out the past streams on the channel already. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Have a fantastic day and goodbye.